Hey everybody, welcome to the full button tutorial of the 2023 Toyota Corolla LE, one of the top selling cars in the world. Typically I like to start from left to right, then we'll go down to the buttons by the shifter and work our way up top, finishing up with the screen. With that said, let's begin. Starting on the door, all Corollas for 2023, which is not new to the Corolla, have the auto down and auto up on all four. So it's a one touch, you just push a little hard click and release and it'll go down or up. Of course, you can do the micro adjust as well. In front of the window switches, I have a window lock. That way my passengers can't move the windows if I don't want them to. And next to that are the door locks. Notice the two little nubbies there on the lock button, which are the same as the key fob. In front of that, I have the mirror adjuster. So if I turn this to the L, I can toggle the mirror like a video game. The neutral position means if I hit this, nothing happens. And if I toggle it to the R, I can change the right door mirror like a video game as well. Down below, I have the levers for the gas, locking gas door, and the trunk from the top. Those will release both of those. And of course, there are two locks for the locking floor mats. It's just a quarter turn and you can lift up the floor mat like so. Make sure your floor mats are locked in. Onto the dash on the bottom, we have the hood release lever over here, which the lever on the hood will be just right of center. And moving our way up, we have the brightness to the gauges. That's a little speedometer symbol of the light bulb, so I can dim them down or really dark. And then it kind of stops and I can click it at the brightest setting. Next to that is the activation for the auto high beams which when I leave the lights in auto, the high beams will know when to go on and off. And some blank plugs, which are available for more loaded Corollas. Moving on to the steering wheel, if I pull this lever down, it releases the adjuster and I can telescope, raise or lower that steering wheel. Once I find the perfect spot, back it goes. The left steering wheel stock operates the lights and the turn signals. DRL off means that I'm not gonna have any front lights during the day while driving. Auto means I'll have daytime runner lights and then the car will actually detect when I need the high beams. Of course I can bypass by doing this or bring it back for the regular auto system. Next up is parking lights. That's going to be dim outer lights with the taillights on and all the interior buttons light up. And then the manual override for the headlights. When the headlight system is on, you'll see this green bulb symbol on the left there. And the little high beam symbol with the A only comes on when the automatic system for the high beams is on. So that button on the left of the dash, if I was to push it, it would turn off the auto high beams and that turns it on. But the way you know that the high beams are actually active is you'll still see that blue high beam symbol. The right steering wheel stock operates the wipers. It's a very simple wiper setup for the Corolla. After I click down once from the off position, it goes to intermittent, which I don't have a ring for the intermittency level, it's just gonna go once in a while. If I click down again, it'll be low, and then if I click down a third time, it will be high. If I pull the stock towards me, I'll wash the windshield with the windshield sprayers, and then the wipers will wipe automatically. We have a couple updates on the steering wheel for 2023, which are gonna be on the right-hand side, but we're gonna start with the left. So on the left side, nothing new for the Corolla, but if you're new to the Corolla at all, this is all gonna look new to you. If you're not new to Toyota, this is going to look very familiar. The four arrows with the OK selector and the back button operate the MID, which is the center screen here called the multi-information display. So I can use the side-to-side -side arrows to go through the different menus. You'll see the little icons light up on the top over here. And if the icon has a menu with little circles on the right, there's even different pages. So I'll go through that shortly but that's what these arrows do. I can even select and go back. So these buttons here will only operate features on the MID. They're not gonna operate anything on the main screen over here. The phone button to the right is gonna pick up or hang up calls or can prompt you to connect a phone to Bluetooth. And when you're on a call, you can change the volume or this will also change the volume to the music that you're playing. If I push this button once and let go, the Toyota software's digital assistant will initialize so you can do some basic commands. However, if I'm connected wirelessly to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which the Android Auto requires an app, by pushing this for about three seconds, the Siri Orb will pop up or the system for the Google Assistant will pop up in there as well. So you can bounce back and forth between pushing it quick for the Toyota software or push and hold for your Apple or your Google slash Android software. 
onto the right side of the steering wheel things are a little bit different for the 2023 Corolla the cruise control system has changed so the buttons are different so we have this ring here for the cruise control and then we also can activate it with this button over here now you used to have to push and hold the cruise control button which I guess Toyota deemed was difficult so now you have a dedicated mode button for your different cruise control modes so check out the MID screen when I hit the mode button so I have cruise control mode or I have adaptive cruise control mode so these are still the same symbols we used to see that's the old school one this is the one that breaks for you but now there's a mode so I don't have to hit a button and hold it then I can set or increase and decrease my speed here and then this will adjust the sensitivity slash following distance this is going to initialize the cruise control system which you have to be driving to do and then this button here is actually going to be your lane tracing assist so when you push that you're going to get the lane tracing assist symbol on the top right over there and that's going to change colors on your screen so it's going to be like a grayish white when you're driving and then it's going to be green when you're in your lane and then one side is going to turn orange if you're going out of your lane so in summary, while you're driving, you just hit the cruise control button, pick your mode, and then you set it. And then you increase and decrease speed like that. And then you can turn on or off your lane tracing assist, which is designed to keep you in the center of your lane. Now, if you're not new to Toyota, you might think, well, what about lane departure alert? On the MID, you see the little symbol here on the top right. That's your lane departure alert, which is still part of the Toyota Safety Sense. But since we've upgraded to Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, you have the lane tracing assist, which keeps you in the middle. And you also have another feature that I'm going to show you momentarily. But on the bottom here on the right, I have the music mode, which will go through your AM, FM, Bluetooth, or Sirius radio. If you push and hold this, it acts as a secret mute slash pause button. And then I can seek and track between my songs like that. In case you're wondering what the new feature is that I mentioned for the Safety Sense 3.0 on top of the Lane Trace Assist that's been updated, it's called Proactive Driving Assist. So we'll use the arrows on the steering wheel to show you what that is in the MID. So in the MID, we'll use the right arrow to go over to the settings menu, which is the gear symbol, and we'll go down to PDA. That's called Proactive Driving Assist. If I turn this on, you'll see the little symbol pop up next to the Lane Trace Assist symbol up there. And PDA, Proactive Driving Assist, is actually going to give you gentle braking inputs when you're going through turns to maximize your control. So if you take a turn a little too quick, the car actually knows when and how much to slow it down to give you the optimal control during that turn that you're taking based on your steering input. So very cool for some people, very interesting. It's a great safety feature, but Toyota gives you the option to turn that on or off if you'd like to. And before we get to the Speedo cluster, I have been seeing this a lot with new Corolla owners. So I'm just gonna cover it with you. Getting the key out of the ignition. So to turn the car off, you just click it counterclockwise. See how the radio is still on? The key is not gonna come out. Now notice, it says push with an arrow. So what I have to do is push it inward into the ignition so I'm pushing it inward and down the screen goes black comes right out so I'm just going to demonstrate again real quick so you can see it in real life so here's how I start the car and then here's how I turn it off and get the key out boom push out super simple on to the speedo cluster so we have a very simple reader here on the left hand side we have the tachometer there's also a little button to change your odometer reading slash trip so you'll see on the bottom of the mid we have odo five miles but if i push the button it'll go to trip a which i can push and hold to clear then push again for trip b push and hold to clear then it goes over to our service mileage so how many miles it deems is coming up for our next service back to odometer below i have my engine temperature on the right, I have the speed and an analog readout. And then there's also park on the top there in red. If I take the car out of park, so say I put in reverse or drive, you'll see park disappears. That's because my automatically applying parking brake, which is one of the buttons by the shifter, 
doesn't need to be pushed. It actually reapplies on its own. When I put it back in park, you're gonna see that park pop back up. That means the parking brake is active. It takes about two seconds, but it does it on its own. And it's totally normal to feel a slight pressure change in the brake pedal and to even hear like a robotic sound or like an electronic sound, kind of like a zzzz when it applies and uh, unapplies itself. On the right there in red, you see the seatbelt is unhooked for me. And on the bottom right, we have our fuel level. If I zoom into the gas symbol, there's a little arrow pointing to the left. That's just to remind me that the gas door is on the driver's side, which I showed you the button to release the locking gas doors on the floor. Let's do the MID review. Using the arrows left and right on the steering wheel, I have these different menus, but before I go through the menus, I just want to show you everything you're looking at at a glance. So the outside temperature is going to show right over here on the top. On the right, it's going to say the time, which has to be adjusted in this car because it's not 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. right now. On the bottom left, it says I'm in park. So if I'm in reverse, driver neutral, it's going to tell me right there, which helps me keep my eyes off the shifter and up higher where they need to be. And then I have the odometer, which we just went over. On the very top right, we have the system for the cruise control showing that it's ready to go, and that's the mode I chose. But of course, I can change that with the mode button like I showed you on the steering wheel. See that? Then below that is the lane departure alert with the little car going out of its lane. And to the left of that symbol, we have the lane trace assist system, which is active. And there's an overview of that, which is going to show you the different colored lines. Like I said, they'll be green when it's activating and it'll turn orange on whatever side if you're actually going out of that lane. At a glance in the menu that we're in, we have the digital speed and below the distance to empty, which is one of the favorites amongst many Corolla owners. But using the left and right arrows, I can go through these different icons. These are the different menus that light up. So the leaf menu, which is like our eco menu, you'll see these little circles that pop up on the left. That's how many pages, or sorry, on the right. That's how many pages each of these menus have, so I can use the up and down arrows. So for example, if I hit down, the middle page shows me distance to empty, my average, which I've been idling in the car, hasn't really been driven. So give it time to calculate accurately. Of course, I can hit OK and hold to reset. Then the eco indicator, which will just give you a quick graph view of your economy. Not super popular, but some people like that. This is the favorite. If I go over to the right, I have the menu for the navigation slash cruise control. So this will give me a larger version of what was showing over here. So if I go out of that, it's going to be small. But if I go to the right, that takes over the whole screen. And then down again is just the compass, one of my personal favorites. It should show you the road you're driving on as well. But for those curious about the cruise control slash lane tracing assist, great page to have. To the right, pretty simple here is the music. It's just going to tell you the artist and the song that's playing. And if I hit OK for source, I can actually change the source from here as well, which is super easy. It's nice to be able to operate the music right from here. To the right, vehicle information, which is a picture of a car with an eye symbol. So this is my trip distance that I traveled and total time since the car was started. Very useful if you're taking trips and you really want to get a feel or if you just moved and you want to see how long it takes to drive from work and back. Or if you're just curious about this information, very interesting page. And something that's been begged for for a long time in the Corolla standard is the individual tire pressures. It's a hot day today, so it's normal to see the pressure to go up, but that'll fluctuate and you can see it on each different tire here. Of course, in the door jam is the sticker with the readout for what they recommend. To the right again, we have the settings, which is a little bit more of an involved menu. In the settings menu, I can change the settings to all the Toyota Safety Sense things, plus some other items. LDA, Lane Departure Alert. If I push and hold OK, I now open up the options for the Lane Departure Alert. That's the feature that alerts you when you're going out of your lane and will typically steer you back in the lane. You now have the option to turn that off and change the alert options. So here's the vibration slash beep, which is new for the Corolla. The new safety sense system is going to have a vibration as well as a beep. So I can change that to just the beep or the vibration and the beep. And the alert timing I can change. Now I'm going to hit the back button on the steering wheel. 
pre-collision system. It's a picture of a car hitting another car with a little boom symbol, and it shows you the direction. They're kind of rear-ending them. That's the system where the camera in the windshield works with the radar device behind the emblem and the car senses that you're coming on too fast, a collision is gonna happen. It alerts you on the screen in orange just red, it's gonna say brake in big white letters. And then if you don't brake, it brakes for you. I can change the settings to that. Now remember, this also has pedestrian detection. I can change the sensitivity here or turn the system off. Going down again, we have the PDA, the Proactive Driving Assist, which like we talked about, will give you some braking input when you're taking the turns a little too fast. The next one, RSA, is road sign assist. So that's a little car reading a road sign. It's basically gonna show you some road signs like stop signs, yield signs, speed limit signs, stuff like that. It is useful. If you don't like it and it's annoying, you can turn that off. Down here in the bottom, we have vehicle settings. If I push and hold okay, the driver brake suggestion when the car thinks you're swerving around, you can turn that on or off. The dynamic radar cruise control, if I push OK, I can change some of the settings here, like the acceleration setting, the guide message, and even the curve speed reduction, all new for the Corolla Safety Sense. The tire pressure wear system, some advanced settings over here, more so used by the technicians. Scheduled maintenance, I can reset the data, I'm not going to do that, that's for the technicians and the oil maintenance, same thing. It gives owners the power to do all this stuff on their own if they want to, and the rear seat reminder. That is gonna go on every time you turn the car off to remind you to check your back seats, just in case you might've forgot a kid back there, or a dog. And people say, well, how would I ever forget a kid back there? Well, here's an example, cause I've worked in the car business for a while. Say your grandparents or an uncle or an aunt, and you're babysitting and your day-to-day -day schedule, you're not used to having a kid back there. So in your muscle memory, you turn the car off, pull the key out, and you go. But today you're babysitting, and the kid is very quiet on the iPad, or it's taking a nap, and or your dog's back there sleeping, and it's not making a peep. That's the day you may forget. So this rear seat reminder can save you the issue, and it could save a life. Moving on, I hit the back button, and I'll go to the right, to the warnings menu, slash messages. So this will store messages if the car needs anything. So like if maintenance is coming up, it'll typically store a message within 500 miles of your next maintenance um, that's due. And if something's going on with one of the sensors, or if you hit something and the sensors are not calibrated anymore, or if the car is just trying to tell you something, it's gonna store it there. And then that little orange symbol is gonna zoom down on the bottom of the screen and stay lit up in orange to remind you. So it's not gonna let you forget. Then if I hit the right arrow again, I go back to the beginning, back to the leaf menu slash eco menu, where you can see some basic information. So to summarize the MID, which is the multi-information display, it's a helper screen that gives you great driving information while you're driving, but it's also a unique screen because it changes the settings to the Safety Sense system. You can't change those settings on the infotainment screen, they can only be changed on the MID. Another quick fact about the MID, when you turn the car off, if anything beeps, it's gonna tell you right on the screen. So if you leave the window open, which I'll do real quick to demonstrate, and I turn the car off, and once I open up that door, it tells me that the window's open. So anytime you hear a little beep, you'll know that the MID is your helper screen to help you figure out what the car is trying to say. Now let's move on to buttons near the shifter. There are not a ton of buttons by the shifter. In fact, on the Corolla, you only have three. We have two over here and we have one in the front. So the first button we kind of went over, the parking brake. From the factory, the car is designed to apply the parking brake when you put it in park and to disengage when you take it out of park. There is a philosophy, you always use it or you never use it. In my humble opinion, always use it. It's great because when you park on the brake, you're not parking on the parking pole. But to each their own, so you have the choice. The brake hold button. When you push this button, you're going to see the green symbol pop up that says hold. And then when you put the car in drive, now remember this will only work in drive, not reverse, so you never get confused. You see it in gold. Once you see the gold, you can take your foot off the brake, but you're in drive, and the car holds itself right where it is. And then I just give it a tiny bit of gas, and the gold goes away. And once I come to a stop again, 
it holds for me and I can take my foot right off the brake. I'm just gonna back it back in its spot real quick, which remember I said it doesn't work in reverse, right? So I can hold the brake all I want. It's not gonna hold for me. That way you always know when you give it gas, you're gonna go forward. Great on Toyota's end. The shifter has this little button over here. That's actually how you get it at a park. It's not an overdrive button. You can't do it like this or go over. You push the little button in, which an overhand grip works best, and it goes all the way down to drive. The B, which requires another push, is braking. That's gonna help your engine brake down the hills, but most people are fine in drive. But since one button's near the shifter, the last button here turns off the traction control. When I push that, it's going to say traction control turned off right here, but it's not gonna give me any symbols. When I turn the car off and turn it back on, the track control is gonna reset and it's always gonna turn back on. Just to put it back in park, you push the button, in park it goes, and within two seconds, the parking brake reapplies, which you'll be able to tell because it says park right up top. Let's move on to the climate control. One of the great things about Toyotas are that the climate control systems are not operated from the screen. So if you wanted that screen turned off or the screen acted up because the car is old, you have your own tangible buttons that you can touch. So how do we use them? We have two main knobs, which are going to be your temperature, signified by the little colors, and the fan speed, signified by the little fan symbol. No dual zone on the LE. So to increase my fan speed, I simply turn this dial here, and it reacts very quickly and for temperature just like so if i hit auto the computer on the car is actually going to deem how much fan speed is needed and then as the car cools it's going to turn that fan down for me but there we go for the sake of the video i'm going to leave it on fan speed one to change the air direction there's a little symbol over here right next to the button i can alter it like that but the great part is, if your windshield ever starts fogging up, you don't have to panic and start finding it. It's right there. So when I hit that, it'll go right to the windshield right away. But since it's a hot day, I want it on me. I can turn the system off with this button. I can resume it by turning the fan back on. Notice how front and rear defrost are next to each other, which makes perfect sense. On to the right section. Eco, heat, and cool. So if I hit this button, the AC will be a little less cold. The heat will be a little less hot. But it's not that much of a difference, but this button is great because it takes that strain off the car. So you know how some smaller cars and four-cylinder engines, when the AC is blasting, you feel a little bit of that drag? This takes that drag away. But since I'm parked and it's a little hot out today, I'm not worried about that. AC and recirculate are near each other. I personally would have flipped these two buttons, but it's not a big deal. Because AC and recirculate, you always want to use together. But this lets you bounce back and forth between fresh air from the outside and recirculate. The reason you want to use re recirculate with the AC is because you want to cool the air that's already cold. You don't want to keep straining the system by pulling hot air in and conditioning it. Why not condition air that's already conditioned, which takes the work out of the system. But if you want fresh air and the AC is on, you can do that or you can just do this and you'll get some nice fresh air. The lowest temperature it will be though is whatever the ambient temperature is outside. And that wraps up the climate control, which is a very easy to use climate control. Right above we have the hazards. They don't light up, but, well, the button doesn't light up, but the hazards do. Let's do the buttons overhead. So for the mirror standard from the factory, it's a simple flipper mirror, dark mode, light mode, simple. And then up top, we have some information. Notice how Toyota put these orange lights here. On some Toyotas, the orange lights for the airbags are here, but they moved it up top, so it's just saying that the passenger airbag is off because there is no passenger. When the passenger sits in the seat, it's going to come on, just to remind you. So that's a deactivating passenger airbag. This glass window comes down, and to push the button there, it will initiate the Toyota Safety Connect, which you get complimentary on the Corolla at this time, in 2023, 10 years, or until the 4G network doesn't exist anymore, which is great because previous Toyota owners only had one year, but now you get 10 years on this new system. Once you're connected, which is very easy from the app, you can push the button, they'll ask if you have an emergency, and if you do, you hit yes, and they'll know exactly where you're located. Buttons over here are very simple. We have the individual lights, all LED now, standard from the factory. If I push the door button, the lights come on when the door opens. And this I call the sun button because it turns all the lights on right now. 
including the back. That summarizes button up top. Just a fun little fact over here. I have a simple mirror, no light for the mirror, but when I pull this out, there's a little slider for when the sun is in that awkward place. That concludes the overhead features. Let's wrap up the tutorial with the infotainment screen. Once you're connected to CarPlay or Android Auto, you're either gonna see a C with a little play symbol or you're gonna see the AA, which is gonna look like a little TP. So on the infotainment screen, I wanna start with the CarPlay and then we'll work our way down. So when I hit CarPlay, it's gonna look just like a Apple phone. Of course, I have my compatible apps here so I can do my Waze, my Apple Maps, etc. This little symbol here represents a home screen and then after I hit that, it's going to represent apps. To get to the Toyota interface, it's very easy. There's a black Toyota app right here. On the side, it shows me my service, the time, and the three apps that I most likely use or use previously. So it's easy to reach those instead of digging around. But when I hit this, it's going to go back to the Toyota interface. But that's pretty much it. Apple interface slash Android interface, Toyota interface. Now on to more of the meat and potatoes. The system for the 2023 is a little bit more simple. This is what the new software system looks like through Toyota. Uh, at first people said it was a little bland, but when you see how simple it is, you'll understand why they did this because Toyota knows most people are gonna be running CarPlay or Android Auto anyway. So this serves as just a basic place where you can go and change some of the settings. So we'll go over some of those settings and then that's gonna wrap up the tutorial. When I hit music, it's gonna turn on the radio. I can't enable the audio to show you because if the music starts playing, it's gonna get copyrighted, but the music is gonna be a little bit more symbols instead of just a, a basic digital readout. When I go to phone, this is where it prompts me to connect a device, which I'm disconnected right now. And that's when you'll get connected to your wireless car player, Android Auto. Onto vehicle, basic stuff here. I got my trip information and some vehicle alerts. No vehicle alerts right now. That's like before on the MID. This is just some gas mileage stuff. So not a ton of stuff here. So now we have three things that we're not gonna use that much. Maybe a little bit of radio, but down below, the settings. So there are some cool settings here I'll show you. And then pretty much the video is wrapped up because you only need to know how to change your clock and do some personal customization. The rest of the stuff you're doing like music, phone calls, etc., are pretty much gonna be run off of your smartphone. If it's not, you have the option here. When you're connected to the phone, it'll show your contacts and your call history. And if you're not connected to a smartphone, you hit that, you can turn on the AM, FM, and Sirius radio right there. But personal info, Bluetooth devices, it'll show you all the phones that you've connected, some general settings here. This is where I can turn the beep on and off, change the screen sensitivity, date and time super simple there it is and then the daylight savings time just like that got the time set and you can set the date right there if you want to on the bottom language and units is right below there too just so you know in case you ever want to change that stuff This is where you can activate your Wi-Fi hotspot, which is a trial for most Toyotas. And display. So display, I can turn the screen off very easy. I just tap it and then tap it again, screen's back on. Fun fact, which is in a previous video, I can change the brightness to the screen and the contrast, or I can turn the automatic and go to dark mode full time, which I have a dedicated video on that you may have seen. Onto the camera, I can change the brightness and the contrast of the camera when I put it in reverse. Which, by the way, let's check out reverse. Simple, we have the bumper line right over here, about a foot away, two and three feet away with a little notch in the middle for the center of the vehicle. And then this is kind of like where the sides of the car are gonna be. But my recommendation is always check your mirrors first and then use the mirror just to go forward and back. That's my personal preference. For sound and media, I can change the equalizer and that will let me do the treble, mid, and bass. 
I'm skipping over some of the stuff that you're not going to use, in my opinion, just to keep the video as concise as possible. But Vehicle Customize is a great page because on the light control, I can change the auto sensitivity to the auto headlights, the auto off timer for the headlights, which the headlights will stay on for a certain amount of time when you turn the vehicle off. If I have daytime runner lights while I'm in auto and the interior lights, how long they stay on when I turn the car off. But even more of my favorite, some door controls. Toyotas will lock when you put them in drive. They will unlock when you put them in park. If you wanted it to stay locked when you put it in park, you can turn off the auto unlock right there. And when you put it in park, it'll actually stay locked. The two press unlock for the wireless key, you can change and locking when the door is opened, you can change as well. Auto relock timer, if the car has been parked, it'll relock itself. You can change the time for that as well. 30 seconds is the smallest for the people who have security in mind. And my two favorites are on the bottom, the feedback lights you can turn off if you don't want it blinking. And the beeping when you unlock the car, you can turn down or raise up if you're a little hard of hearing. Below Vehicle Customized, we just have some dealer info stuff, which is not super important. You can add a dealer. You'll probably add your dealer into your Toyota app for info and security. You can do a privacy lock. You can change the vehicle's name. Software update, you can check for updates over here. And then apps. This will be for your remote connect for starting the vehicle. And basically just some apps that are compatible with the car. To me, a slight redundancy because like I said before, I myself and Toyota probably figure you're going to be up here in CarPlay or Android Auto anyway, so this is just more basic stuff there. But that wraps up the tutorial for the 2023 Toyota Corolla LE. We went from left to right, we went over the speedometer, the MID, buttons by the shifter, and some personal changes and customizations to the safety sense system and the car itself. So let me know if that helped you out. Please give it a like if you did and consider subscribing for future Toyota content. I promise it'll be worth it. And ask me any questions in the comment section because you know that's where you can find me. I will see you in the next one. Thanks again for watching. Peace.